Hey, 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 y'all. We are back. We are back. Still talking about diabetes. Okay. This is diabetes part two. Okay. Part two. I told you all. Um, so the first video we talked about diabetes medications and its side effects. And we talked about the role that insulin plays and in not just in diabetes management, but in life. Okay. In your everyday life, because you need it. You need the insulin. So today, um, let's talk about, um, how weight loss affects diabetes management. I don't like this management word, okay? Because I my, my goal is to help you to um, show you how to reverse the diagnosis. So we don't want to manage diabetes. We want to rid our bodies of the diabetes. So how, how does weight loss affect that? Um, what about alcohol? Like, does alcohol and cigarettes, does that, how does that play into this whole diabetes thing, right? We're going to talk about that. And let's talk about some natural remedies and supplements you can take, right, to help um, manage diabetes. Y'all know how I feel about that. Um, so first, let's talk about this weight loss. And so I hear people say all the time, Coach Rowe, my doctor say, if I just lose some weight, that's going to help with my numbers. I'm like, well, to me, to me, we're focusing on the wrong thing. So it's not like, how did you lose the weight? Okay. You lose the weight by changing what you eat. So to me, the focus should be if you change what you eat, right? If you change what you eat, um, you're going to help to lower your numbers. Okay. You're going to fare better. Um, your body is going to perform better. You're going to feel better. You, you're going to be able to move more. You're going to be able to exercise because you're, you're lighter, right? You're going to have more energy. Um, your body is going to metabolize this glucose better, right? Um, you're just going to work. Your body's going to work better. Okay. When, when you start to change what you put in it, like, it's like, just like putting, you know, the proper fuel in the car is going to perform better. The same thing. You put the proper fuel in your body. You are, you are the car is going to perform better. So when they say weight loss, when they say the doctor say, if I lose weight, that'll help improve my numbers. I'm like, why? Well, I think that's a byproduct. That's a byproduct. The weight loss is a byproduct. Okay. Of, of eating healthier right? When you start to eat more of God's food, your body just automatically releases the weight, releases the weight. But let me tell you what it says. It says losing weight can reduce the risk of complications for people with diabetes, okay? It says it can also improve your cardiovascular risk factors, like, you know, stroke and heart attack, like losing weight can improve your cardiovascular risk factors. Um, and so like weight loss is very, is very important um, it also says, I'm going to tell you this, what it says um, for those that choose to, you know, lose weight. Here's some other benefits. It says preventing future diabetes in people with pre-diabetes or metabolic syndrome. So if you are pre-diabetic, meaning, so um, if you're, if you're diabetic, your A1C, it's uh, five point, uh, is greater than 5.7. Okay. If, uh, no, no, Rochelle, get it right. Get it right. You're pre-diabetic. If your numbers are 5.7 to 6.4, that's pre-diabetic. You're diabetic if your numbers are, are uh, 6.5 or greater, okay? So greater than 6.4, 6.5 or greater, um, that's your A1C, you are considered diabetic, okay? So it says um, to lose some benefits of losing weight is preventing future um, diabetes in people with pre-diabetes, okay? That means your A1C is between that 5.7 and 6.4 range, meaning we start to lose some weight, we can reverse that, okay? We start to lose some weight, we can reverse that because we're losing weight because we're eating better, right? So you start, remember we talked about, you start to give your body more of these uh, leafy greens, more of the protein, less of the simple carbs, less of the sugar and the processed foods, right? Your body starts to, um, uh, the pancreas can keep up with the with the sugar that's being deposited into the bloodstream. You know, that's the food that's being broken down. Now it's healthier food, which means it's less sugar, which means the pancreas can release the insulin. The insulin can grab the glucose, which is the sugar, and sends it into the cells and be metabolized as energy, right? So as we're doing that, we're decreasing the blood sugar levels in the bloodstream. As we're doing that, over time, we're decreasing our A1C levels so that pre-diabetic condition can now be reversed to normal. You see how that works? You see how that works? And so that's what it says. Uh, so those are some of the other benefits that uh, losing weight can do. It also says improving other metabolic conditions such as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and sleep apnea. So here's something. Most of the times when we think of cirrhosis of the liver, okay, people think of alcohol. Oh, they must drink a lot. No, 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 no. There is a such thing as non-alcoholic induced cirrhosis of the liver. 
right? Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's non-alcoholic induced cirrhosis of the liver. That's if you're just taking in too much sugar. You see, I never forget my cousin. Uh, this was many years ago. He was an amputee. He had already gotten one uh, leg amputated, right? He was type two diabetic and he was on all this medication. And I attempted to help him, but you know, you got to want to be helped. And uh, I remember he was telling me about his medication. He said, Coach Ro, no, I'm sorry. He didn't call me Coach Ro. He was like, Rochelle, they got me taking this liver uh, medication. I don't, there's nothing wrong with my liver. He was not even aware that he was dealing with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, right? See all this sugar that affects your liver. People don't realize that. They don't realize it affects their liver. They don't realize it affects their central nervous system. Like there's, there's no place in the body that sugar doesn't affect. Why? Because blood goes in every part of your body, right? And where's the where's the uh, the sugar located in your blood? So if the blood goes to every part of your body, the sugar in your blood goes to every part of the body. So there's no place in the body that the sugar, that that sugar doesn't affect, right? So he was dealing with non alcoholic um, non alcoholic induced cirrhosis of the liver unknowingly. So he was taking um, liver medication. So so these are things you lose the weight, you can improve these um, metabolic conditions such as non-alcoholic cirrhosis of the liver, uh, non-alcoholic induced cirrhosis of the liver and sleep apnea. Isn't that something? You mean to tell me I can lose weight and I can get off the CPAP machine? Uh, you mean to tell me I can lose weight? I can start changing what I put in my body. And as a, as a byproduct, start to lose weight. And, and then as a byproduct of that, get off the CPAP machine. Yes. You see how one thing just is it's a domino effect. So I've always told my people, I said, when you control your blood sugar, you control your whole life. Hmm? When you control, there are people that have gotten in my program, diabetes, had no idea they were about to normalize their blood, uh, blood pressure, had no idea they were about to get off the CPAP machine, had no idea they were about to get rid of their hot flashes, their, their, their uh, menstrual cramps, okay, their migraine headaches, had no idea. You understand? When you control your blood sugar, you control your whole life, right? And so these are some 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 um some benefits, okay? When you start to lose the weight, that's because you change what you put in your body. All these things change, and it also just says improving quality of life. Yeah, because you're gonna feel better. You're gonna feel better. You're gonna feel lighter. You're gonna have a better outlook on life. Like all these things, just from losing weight, right? Your numbers are gonna be better, right? Uh, which in turn will will um significantly reduce, right? Your A1C, maybe go from, from, from diabetic to pre-diabetic to normal or go from pre-diabetic to normal. Okay. Uh, or go from normal to a better normal. Okay. I just know when you give your body what it needs to drive, it will. Okay. And so we talked about weight loss effect. Um, let's talk about, uh, alcohol and cigarettes. Mm, we'll be doing that. No way. Not a whole lot of it. Okay. But I'm gonna tell you what it says. It says heavy alcohol, watch this can cause pancreatitis. Okay, pancreatitis, y'all. Where does the insulin come from? The pancreas, right? So heavy alcohol, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, heavy alcohol use, hold on. Heavy alcohol use can cause pancreatitis, which can damage the pancreas' ability to produce insulin and potentially lead to diabetes. So if the pancreas is damaged from all the alcohol, because now you got pancreatitis, then it can do its job, okay? The pancreas produces the insulin. We need the insulin to grab the glucose out of the bloodstream and send it into the cells to be used up as energy. But if it can't produce it, that means it can't remove it from the uh, from, from the bloodstream. And so now you have elevated elevated blood sugars, right? Now you're diabetic. Now, now, now maybe you have to take insulin, okay? Because your pancreas can't do its, its job. Right, it says alcohol can also make it harder for the liver to release glucose, which can increase the risk of hypoglycemia for people who use insulin or certain diabetes medications. Okay, so what they're saying is if what happens is um, your liver stores glucose as well. Okay. And so what happens is um, when you're taking the diabetes medication, right? And it lowers your, 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 your blood glucose. Okay. The liver will dump some glucose in the bloodstream to bring it back up to normal. Okay. Or, or like maybe early in the morning, you know, your, your, um, your glucose drops early in the morning, like maybe before you wake up, the liver dumps, you know, glucose in the system, bring it back up. So it, so it can just reach a normal level. 
right? But what happens is alcohol can make it harder for the liver to release the glucose, right? Which will send you into a hypoglycemic state, meaning meaning when the when the uh, medication drops it so low, right? The liver can't produce the uh, secrete the, the released glucose to bring it back up. Now you're hypoglycemic. That can be dangerous too. Okay, hyperglycemia is bad, but hypoglycemia is also bad. Okay, that's also bad, guys. So we we don't want that. Um, so yeah, that's that's what alcohol does. And so yeah, no no alcohol. Like we don't need alcohol. We diabetic. Okay. Um, let's talk about tobacco. Hmm. I know this is firsthand experience uh, with my with my mother. It says smoking can increase blood sugar levels and lead to insulin resistance. Who knew? Who knew that? So my mother, who uh, died of lung cancer in 2012, but before she died, she had developed type 2 diabetes. Yeah, she had developed type 2 diabetes. Heavy smokers, more than 20 cigarettes per day. And that was probably mama. That's a pack a day. Heavy smokers, more than 20 cigarettes per day, have almost double the risk of developing diabetes compared to non-smokers. Hmm. Did, did y'all hear that? Heavy smokers, right? Um, it says smoking can also damage blood vessels, which it can increase the risk of heart attack, stroke, amputation, and blindness. Come on, y'all. You see, these, this is not good. This like, we don't need to be smoking cigarettes. Like if we're diabetic, high blood pressure, like that's our focus. Our focus needs to be on getting healthy, not, not these, these, these terrible lifestyle habits that's, that's harming us even more. Like it's not helping your situation. It's making it worse. It's making it worse. And I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it firsthand. And so, yeah, um, smoking can increase blood sugar levels and lead to insulin resistance. You say, what is insulin resistance? It's when, it's when your body is like, you know what? Um, we, we, we're not even, we're not even phased by this anymore. You know, it's like, it's like, um, it's like the insulin tries to take the glucose and send it to the cells and the cells is like, I ain't, we ain't taking it no more. No more. Like we're we're not we're not taking any more sugar. We're done. Boom. Nothing you can do. I'm done. I'm 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 all I'm already filled. I can't even deal with what I got. You trying to give me more? Boom. Shops closed. No more. No more. I can't I can't do it anymore. And so what does that lead to? Diabetes. Type two diabetes. Why? Because now the blood sugar. Uh, I mean the the blood sugar is elevated. Right. The sugar, the glucose in the blood, it just gets higher and higher and higher. Can't deal with it can't deal with it. And so insulin resistance. So then you need um, uh, insulin to do the trick, right? But when the, when the body becomes insulin resistant on its own, it's like, no, we're not, we're not doing that. It's like you need medication to force the body to do it at this point, right? But it's supposed to do it on its own. When, when it's going at a, at a moderate rate, okay, at a normal rate, when you're eating well, um, when you're eating clean or normal and not not having a diet that's just overly consumed with sugar and processed food and 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 simple carbs and juice and soda and and, and coffee and tea and you say tea with sugar, of course. I'm saying all these are, you know, uh, sugar laden, of course, right? Um, yeah, the body's supposed to do this on its own, okay? When it can handle the load, but when you just give it too much, the body shuts down. And it becomes insulin resistant. So that's what happens. It says smoking can increase blood sugar levels and lead to insulin resistance. So that's not what we need. Okay, we, we don't need that at all. So alcohol, smoking, bad juju, bad juju, okay? Bad juju. Okay, so here we go. Last one, let's talk about some natural remedies or some supplements, okay? Natural remedies or supplements to help manage diabetes, okay? to help manage diabetes. Um, natural remedies right off the break. Y'all know, Coach Roy always says leafy, leafy greens are your friend. Leafy greens are your friend. You can't get more natural than God's food. Okay, leafy greens are your friend. I promise you, you start to, you know, incorporate more salads in your life. You start to go raw more. Okay, these raw vegetables, leafy greens. Are your, everybody type that in the chat. Leafy greens are my friend. You start to do that. You start to drink your water right? At, le at least half your body weight now. So you start to move your body every day, at least 30 minutes. Just move, just walk. Yeah. I didn't say you have to be Flo Joe. Okay. I didn't date it myself. Okay. They got 
fast women out there now. You don't have to be Flo Joe, okay? If you're a man, you have to be Carl Lewis, okay? Um, just get out there and walk. Just get out there and walk, right? And so here's some other things. Um, eating more fiber. Eating more fiber, absolutely. It says slows down digestion and sugar consumption. I mean, sugar absorption, not consumption, right? Slows down digestion and sugar absorption. That's what fiber does. Uh, let's see, what does this say? Um, now here it is, here's something you can do. No, I'm not going to tell you that. Mm, I'm not going to tell you that because you don't need to be eating them anyway. Uh, here's something else you can do. We talked about exercise, right? Moving your body, supplements. Uh, here's a little trick that can like really lower your sugar instantly, cinnamon. Ooh, culture, I didn't know that. Yeah, cinnamon. Like putting some cinnamon, you know, in your, in your food, uh, sprinkling some water, drinking it. Cinnamon. I'm not saying it tastes great, but cinnamon helps to like immediately uh, lower your blood sugar. Um, chromium, vitamin B1, okay, uh, alpha lipoic acid, um, bitter melon green tea, resveratrol. Okay, come on, Vivix. Come on, Shackley product, Vivix. Um, magnesium, right? These are things you can use to lower your blood sugar. Okay. Lower your blood sugar. There's so many, there's so many more things you can do. They say eating fresh garlic. Okay. We talked about drinking your water, getting, getting quality sleep, right? Do you understand? Like sleep affects your blood sugar as well. If you're not getting enough sleep, if it's not quality sleep, that's going to affect your blood sugar as well. Um, so what else? Uh, managing stress, stress too. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's so, it's so many things. Let me see. I want to see if I can give you just a few more, few more, uh, healthy options, uh, natural remedies for, for, uh, lowering your blood sugar, apple cider vinegar. There's one apple cider vinegar. Okay. Apple cider vinegar. Um, some people just Take a little bit every morning, okay? It says taking two tablespoons before bedtime can reduce your morning fasting blood sugars. Two tablespoons before bedtime. Um, it says even better, take one to two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar taken with meals can decrease the glycemic load of the carbohydrate-rich meal, okay? One to two, one to two tablespoons with your meal can decrease the glycemic load, which, which means it's going to um, reduce the amount that your blood sugar spikes, okay, and um, from a carbohydrate-rich meal. Uh, yep, yep, yep. This person says uh, you can consume the apple cider vinegar alone prior to a meal and mix it into salad dressings or uh, teas. We talked about fiber. How about barley? Okay, these are things. Recommended amount of fiber is around 30 grams per day. Around 30 grams of fiber per day, okay? Um, but most Americans get about six to eight grams a day, not nearly enough. Okay. So 30 grams a day, that's going to help. We talked about chromium, zinc. That's another one. That's a supplement Shackley. Okay. Zinc is another one. Um, has antioxidant effects, uh, can reduce your blood sugar, your A1C, uh, aloe vera that I did a, uh, a reel with that. That's on my, uh, Instagram. Aloe vera is another one right? Um, uh, cinnamon, we talked about that. Fenugreek, that's another one, okay? That's another one. Uh, and I think that's it. So these are just some natural supplements and uh, remedies that you can use right at home, you know, uh, low cost, right? Um, that can help to reduce your blood sugar, right? Um, so again, I don't really want to talk management. I want to talk reversal. I want to talk about ridding your body of this stuff. And again, if you need help, okay, get into my free masterclass, guys. Get into the free masterclass. I have one every day, Monday through Friday, um, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be in the link will be in the description, but you can write this down. It's I am the hope masterclass.com. All one word. I am the hope masterclass.com. That is the link. You can put the www in the beginning, but that's the link that will get you there, but it'll be in the description of the uh, of this video. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it, you all. So we talked about weight loss um, and how that affects diabetes management, as that word. 
Um, we talked about alcohol and cigarettes and the effect that has on your diabetes. We talked about natural remedies or supplements to help manage the diabetes, you all. And that is all we have, man. So we talked about blood pressure. We talked about diabetes. So take one guess what we're going to talk about next. Take one guess. Take one guess. You guessed it, cholesterol. We're going to talk about cholesterol, guys. It's going to be it's going to be good. Okay. Again, side effects of cholesterol, lowering medications, um, dietary supplements that can help lower your cholesterol, complications associated associated with high cholesterol, best exercise regimen for someone with a chronic illness like high cholesterol, high blood pressure, or diabetes. Oh, yeah, that's what you want to know. Okay, what's the best exercise regimen? So yeah, so stick around don't go anywhere. Um, stay tuned in. We got more videos coming. Again, like, share, subscribe. Um, again, if you have any, any questions, just type it in the comments. I'll be sure to answer that um, and get into that free masterclass. That free masterclass will give you access to my Sugar and Sweet Academy. And that's a six-week um, health coaching program where people are getting free. Okay. They're getting free. They're ridding their bodies of type 2 diabetes. Um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, okay, chronic inflammation, arthritis, um, getting off CPAP machines, getting rid of migraine headaches, debilitating menstrual cycles, erectile dysfunction, um, infertility, okay? Uh, so just so much, thyroid issues, um, acid reflux, digestive issues, you name it. It's all going down in the Sugar and Sweet Academy. So guys, don't delay, get in there today, all right? And that's all I have. Listen, I am Rochelle T. Parks. I am your health motivator. And guess what? Whether you like it or not, mm, 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 I do not care. Okay? I can, I will, and I must continue to walk alongside you and help you to achieve optimal health. Please love y'all.